Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of this little mini series, I guess you could call it. And today's video is going to be on how to become a H1 student in chemistry for the Leaving Cert. The Leaving Cert is three weeks away, we all know that, but it is still possible to push your grade up if you are doing the right techniques. So yeah, without further ado, let's go in and talk about chemistry. Now I know a lot of people can find chemistry very tricky and I get that, but the most important thing in chemistry, above everything, is understanding the content. Forget about biology where you can just read the material, learn it off, you cannot do that with chemistry. Well personally, I can't anyway. In my opinion, you need to understand that material so well and you should be able to teach someone else about that material yourself. Every question that you have in your head about a topic, you need to ask the question and you need to get an answer. Because if you're left thinking about, oh, what if, what if, I'm confused, blah, 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 you're not gonna ace that topic on a test. Understanding is so, so important. So use your sources. Watch videos online. I actually really like all of the experiments. I think they're by Edco on YouTube. They're really, really good. Watch random videos online of, even if they're Americans or English people who don't do the Leaving Cert, talking about moles or whatever you're confused about. Watch videos, read articles online, understand what's going on because that is the basis of everything. Personally, I think if you understand chapters like two, three, four, five, and six, that's all like the history of the atom, bonding, intermolecular bonding, uh, electronegativity, that is a very good basis for your entire chemistry learning. Ask your teacher questions. It could be the stupidest question of all time. Your teacher does not care. They want you to understand the material. They want to help you. So don't feel stupid because if you have a question, I'd say 10 other people have the exact same question in their head, but they're too nervous to ask. Now, obviously, if you understand the material, that is great, but you do need to get into your head. I think most chemistry teachers will give out notes, so you don't need to write your own notes in chemistry because that would take up a lot of time. But guys, flashcards, again, are where it's at. When you write flashcards, all of that information is going to your head as you write it, even if you don't think so. And obviously, you need to comprehend and understand the material as you write it. You can condense all of the material in one chapter into one single flashcard. So the day before your exam, you skim over all of your flashcards and you bring that information from the back of your head to the front of your head. For example, this is my flashcard on chapter two, which is all like the history of the atom. And I just have them labeled from one to eight about all the things I need to know. When writing flashcards, you need to write them as though you're answering an exam question. I know that sounds very confusing, but I want to explain. You need to know those chemistry exam questions inside and out. Like every other science, they are so repetitive. So when you are writing your flashcards, for example, about Dalton, the scientist, for example, you do not need to know what his first name was. You do not need to know what he looks like. You do not need to know his date of birth. None of that will ever be asked, even though it might be in your teacher's notes. You need to go on to study clicks or on to wherever you get your exam questions and you need to figure out what do they ask on Dalton even though he is literally probably 0.03% of the course. You figure out what they ask and you write down on your flashcard exactly what you need to know about Dalton which is literally that he proposed atomic theory and what atomic theory states. That is it. That's all you need to know. All of your flashcards should be based around what they ask in the exam. As I was saying, exam questions are so, so important. If you, let's say, pick question five, which is usually all like that bonding, history, intermolecular bonding, electronegativity, all of that kind of stuff. If you know for certain I'm going to do that question in the exam, you better go and do every single question five that has ever come up and every mock question and write down on a little sheet of paper maybe some of the questions that you found a little bit difficult that were a bit dodgy maybe some mock questions that you found a bit hard so that you know you're going to go into question five totally and utterly prepared you just can't go wrong then you should be getting 100 percent in that question when we're talking about titrations titrations are everywhere in chemistry everything is a titration if a titration comes up the exact same questions come up how to clean a pipette how to clean this how to measure this it might be hard information but if you just learn it off and you spit it back down on the paper it's 100 percent titrations also come along with equations like the math section you need to get that maths right i don't care if you sit down and you practice every titration equation that has ever come up you need to get that right it is the same type of question every single time i use this equation for everything this is my holy grail you might just think that's such a random equation but you can move that equation around and you can usually use it for most of the titration maths. 
you need to know organic chemistry. You need to know it. Organic chemistry could pop up up to like three or four times in the exam. And if you have that stuff learned off on your flashcards, you are ready to go. Lastly, I just wanna say that you need to believe that you're a H1 student. Like if you're just, you know, going into chemistry, not listening, not understanding what's going on, you're never gonna get there. If you think, God, H1 in chemistry, like that's impossible, I'm never gonna get that. You're just not gonna become a H1 student then. You need to be able to think, it's possible for me to get a H1 in this subject, and I will get a H1 in this subject. If you put your mind to it, it is, Honestly, not that hard to get a H1 in chemistry, in my opinion. If you know those experiments off by heart, they are guaranteed marks. Also with your organic, guaranteed marks. The same type of questions always come up and you need to figure out what those questions are and know the answers. I really hope this video helped you all out. Uh, I really hope that you can push your grade up and I hope this motivates you to go and study your chemistry. It's not that hard guys, don't be hard on yourselves. I know chemistry can be really difficult and I was actually really struggling with it at the start of fifth year, but I swear once you know what's going on, you will be fine. I really hope this video helped you. My battery is actually flashing. I need to end this video. I also am going to film a physics one um, for you all. So hopefully you like that too, even though not a lot of people do physics. And I did just post a biology one. So hopefully that helps. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye.